currently, I think last time also when we were here, we talked about uh, extremism in the region and, and how it's slowly uh, rising its ugly head and trying to uh, inject some kind of a new form of, of, of extremism to, to countries like in Sri Lanka 2019, we didn't know anything about Islamic uh, uh, extremism and, and here we are dealing and uh, talking about ISIS and all the, in Sri Lanka established very well uh, you know, to the level that they can carry out a coordinated attack. Uh, we see another uh, incident like uh, the last time we discussed was uh, the killing of uh, Priyant Kumar uh, in, in, in Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, that is also the, uh, attributed to a, a certain Islamic group in, in, within that region, in the Sialkot region. Uh, there are problems in Bangladesh. Uh, there are problems in India, there are problems in Maldives. All these countries are grappled with terrorism and extremism right now. Now, how are we going to solve this problem? Because um, first simple example uh, for a minister, India gave us the intelligence 2019 that there is something of this sort is happening. We did not act on it. We did, we've completely failed. 267 lives were lost as a result. Now, how can we ensure all of us comes, share intelligence, understand this problem and start addressing it very quicker than we should. I, I, I'm sure we are already too late about this. No, I think, uh, Mahesh, how to get, uh, get about on this issue is immediate action. Now, countries shouldn't work in isolation of one another. That means it affects the regional uh, presence of the states. We are not only representing governments, these uh, regional bodies or universal bodies um, or multilateral bodies represent the state of which government function for a period of time. Successive governments can come and equally go, but the state remains. So we have to take the people's interest in the context of the statehood of a given country. So thereby, the regional units like the SAC, you take the ASEAN, which is fairly active in my opinion. You have the EZD, of which we have become a member. We have got uh, a presence in the RF, Asian uh, ASEAN Regional Cooperation, of which 27 major countries are represented along with, on the sidelines of that of the East uh, ARF. Uh, so they are uh, uh, sidelines of the yeah, ASEAN. We also have the, of the Commonwealth. And we have the Commonwealth. And we are also part of the United Nations. We are we can even have a voice within the non-aligned movement. It's a quite a, a, a quite a substantial presence in the world. Non-aligned movement, though it is not active, it has a voice. Then also we have the the Arab League. We have got the um, Shanghai Cooperation. So likewise, we have the Asian Cooperation Dialogue. So likewise, we have several bodies to which we have subscribed ourselves. Now these are the bodies that we were using the time we had, uh, we were confronted with terrorism. That's the time we were actively engaged and my presence was registered in almost every possible platform we got to get onto at that given time. So therefore, the threats that are emanating from the uh, extremism and also fundamentalism that comes into play in terms of politics in the world or they are trying to enter into the political makeup of given countries. That's the threatening thing. That's what is, I see uh, happening now in uh, Pakistan or that uh, virtually took over Afghanistan. Now it is coming, the, the winds are blowing in our direction. So therefore, it is important as a country to think first and think of our people and then invite the other countries of like-minded countries to become part of this drive. Other we can't decide on in isolation. That is what the role of the foreign uh, ministries are about. To ex exchange your views, concerns, express yourself, invite their uh, subscription to the same lines of uh, your thoughts and negotiate certain areas of cooperation amongst countries so that we can take it forward. If we just allow someone to get up in the morning and decide Oh, that is something that we have to just address. No way. There has to be prepared in the context of deliverance 
on what you are going to submit to your regional friends. So that's what friendships are all about. Are they, what are we signing these treaties? What are we, yeah. our protocols are all about? I think we have almost every protocol to which we have subscribed by now as a country, as a state. So it's a valid uh, opening for us to cite those protocols and invite their attention and cooperation. And that's how we have to go forward. See the cry, for instance, Mahesh, now Joe Biden is creating in terms of democracy, mm -hmm. on one On the other hand, uh, in terms of environment, these are new summits emerging, discussing the issues. And thereby, there is some action that we can expect. So if you keep silent, four years will pass for any country, and at the end of it, nothing has happened. So I think regionally, we have to give, become more active in terms of our play.